is it helpful, but is it actually hurtful? Because let's be honest, that middle yeah. of the road, that average voter, the people in the middle that like the pragmatist caucus is trying to reach, they're trying to reach them by diluting and watering down what libertarian messaging is. And while that might get you votes in the short term, it doesn't actually change culture. It doesn't actually change politics. And it doesn't actually change anything long term. And it doesn't preserve any gains you might make. The reality is an understanding of the Overton window is absolutely necessary when you're going to engage in fringe politics. We are not mainstream politics. We are not Republican and Democratic parties. We are not trying to compete with the Republican and Democratic parties. We are not capable, able, or like in the same playing field as them because we're not in the Overton window. And the Overton window is incredibly important. You cannot move the Overton window more towards liberty. And by the way, Joseph Overton, uh, the political scientist who created the Overton window and like wrote about it and it was named after him posthumously, was a fucking Libertarian Party anarchist. Um, yeah. who came up with this theory. And so, like, libertarians should be, like, well-tuned in understanding it. It's our own goddamn creation from our own movement. Um, but the original scale of the Overton window, it wasn't to place ideas and policies in relation to each other. It was, you had a scale of more freedom and less freedom. And it goes from inconceivable, radical, uh, possible to policy in the middle. The idea is to move the window more towards more freedom so that what is inconceivable now is pragmatic in the future. Right. You do not do that by becoming pragmatic yourself and moving yourself closer to the uh, less freedom side. Because if you're moving your own policies closer to less freedom, that is a compromise of the integrity of the position you're trying to instill on culture. And compromise, as much as people love the word <coughs> compromise, 246 years of political compromise gave us this tyrannical system out of the beautiful libertarian republic that the founders created. So, yeah. What do you think about this, Joe? I want your thoughts. Okay. Um, so I don't think every state affiliate should be like New Hampshire. And I don't think no. the national party should be like New Hampshire. I think New Hampshire, no, I think New Hampshire is kind of the tip of the spear. It's the lightning rod that opens up space for whether it's Spike Cohen or Dave Smith or whoever it is to kind of like say, all right, that's <laughs> that's a little far. This is what I think. But it's doing what Justin is talking about. It's shifting yeah. the allowable opinion. Because before, what Dave Smith or Spike Cohen or Justin Amash or whatever would say might sound insane. But if the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire is going to ratchet it up to 10 and say, fuck that, we're going to say this. You're doing then, 11. Let, let's, and, let's call it what well, it is. You're doing but it's 11. working. And here's but the thing. Then, it might not be working for yeah. Idaho. It's working in New Hampshire. Though. The, liber the child labor tweet. At that at the time we put out the child labor yeah. tweet, that was a 10. Do you know what it is now? It's a fucking four. Because do you know what happened three months after the child labor tweet? The New Hampshire House of Representatives repealed most of the restrictions on child labor in New Hampshire. Yeah, I know. Yeah.